Oh my god, TF Nation had no good right being as good as it was this year. Genuinely, what a laugh. What's going on, everyone? I'm back. I survived TF Nation 2024. Most of my hopes came true. None of my fears came true. I had a blast. Honestly, one of the best TF Nations I've had to date and slash of AAs. And honestly, literally one of the best ones I've had to date. What a weekend. And yeah, it was great. I had a really good time. I loved it. That'll do the end. Bye. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the convention. Give it a little bit of a brief overview, a bit of a brief rundown. Um, talk a bit about the robots and the bits and pieces that I did pick up. If you're looking for more of like a kind of vlog style video where I kind of talk a bit more about the weekend itself, go into a little bit more detail and show exactly what I was doing kind of step by step. Do check out my vlog video, which will be somewhere around here or at the end of the video, wherever you can put it on YouTube these days. So yeah, where do I even start? TF Nation 2024. Um, it was great. I loved it. I had a good time. That's all I can remember. So what time did I get there? I think I got there on the Friday about like half 12-ish or so. Uh, met with the gang, met them at the train station, kind of all got there around the same time this year, which is pretty nice. Um, went over to the hotel, kind of checked in, vibed. And just, yeah, the Friday was just a bit of a chill day, really. Didn't really do loads. Um, caught up with some guys, got up with Tony, Sunway Best G1. Lovely to see you again. Um, John Recreate 4, really cool to see him again. And uh, I saw Jonathan Prime there, and it was all right seeing Johnny, I guess. Might might not have bought some figures and bits and pieces on the Friday. Um, you know, I think it's always kind of tradition, really, you know, to actually buy figures before the convention's kind of probably kicked off. Tasha was nice enough to throw us all a little TFN themed quiz on the Friday night, which we all love. We love Tasha, we love the quiz. Um, I didn't win, but I did get a nice little badge um, because, you know, who doesn't love a badge? Tom did win though, won a really nice cool sound wave, uh, sort of KO, one official figure, which was nice and definitely wasn't a little bit jealous of that. Saturday morning, wake up actually feeling relatively fresh, probably because I didn't get just like one hour of sleep like I normally do. Tom dragged me out of bed and took me to the gym. Um, or was it the other way around? Then after getting suited and booted in the whole Nest costume outfit that I took this year, uh, went right over to the dealer room, uh, cubes. So I did get the general entry. Matt and Izzy? No, Matt and... Um, yeah, Matt and Izzy got uh, the priori entry because um, they're not cheapskates like me. Once we did end up getting in there eventually, um, it just came floating back to me. It really just reminded me of why I do this every year, why we all love it. Um, and yeah, you just get in the queue straight away, don't you? And you just think like, yeah, this is what it is. This is what we're here for. Um, you get in there and you're just like, it's just it's just like chaos, but in a brilliant, lovely way. The rest of the day went a bit something like this. We bought some figures, had a bit of wander around, um, ate some protein snacks because I couldn't be bothered to go out and get lunch during the day. Rummage around some bins. Um, action figure bins is not just like Hilton Birmingham bins. I'm, I'm not that bad. I didn't really get like as much as I normally kind of would be going for each year. Like I literally spent about half the budget because like there were a few bits which I kind of missed out on one or two bits which I wanted which weren't there. Yeah, Saturday haul ended up looking a little something like this in the end. So that was pretty much the Saturday daytime. Once the day kind of finished, I thought, right, I'm getting out this Nest costume. I love it, but it's just too hot now. I got changed and went over to the Hilton again for the Club Con. Um, and yeah, I love the Club Con. You know, it's again like the yearly tradition that you go along for that. Um, always love to kind of get involved and get my hands on stuff like that, you know, kind of see what we're up to this year. Started off as per usual with the uh, Pretenders cosplay, always love to see that. They'd found a load of like audition cuts of like actors who could have played Wheelie in the original 86 movie, which was really cool. And um, it's kind of showing how like different other actors could have taken their sort of turn and twist on the whole character. Um, and there's a character which is a little bit controversial, I can't lie, some of those takes were really, really cool. Um, I like Wheelie, you know, Wheelie is one of those characters I think you either love or hate him, but I do love Wheelie. After that, we did, of course, have the script reading. Um, all the voice actors and guys kind of got up on stage and did the whole thing where it's like, I kind of go somewhere, then like all of a sudden they all start falling through portals and all the different characters have to work together. Um, that's always fun. I always do love the script reading. It is always a really good time having stuff like that. And, and they just give it their all. They just really slip straight back into character. I mean, for some of these guys, they haven't voiced these characters in like, God knows how long. So the fact that they then just just go just like that and it's just a tap. They're just back on it. They're just loving it. Um, and yeah, it's always just a really nice time kind of seeing those guys just slip straight back into character. But about kind of half past nine-ish, um, we were going to stay for the more or the much more than meets the eye. Um, kind of like them showing off the G1 episodes again. But I'm not going to lie, we all just thought, oh, look, we're going to go get a table at the bar. 
get out of it, it's too hot. So we just chilled in the bar for like a long, long time. We were in the bar till late that night. And I got to sleep about, I think I got back up to about half three. Did have to kind of get my game head on a little bit for the Sunday though, because I knew this would be the last opportunity I would get, or at least would get for a long time to get autographs from David Kay and Greg Berger. And thankfully I did go ahead and meet those two guys, two really, really lovely gents. Literally it was at about like, uh, like 20 to 3 on the Sunday I sort of thought right look I probably better go meet Greg Berger now like they sort of said I'll come back about sort of like 3ish you know he'll be back you know from his panels and all the rest so I literally got in the queue at 20 to 3 and they went oh we're going to cap the queue after you literally about 5 minutes to 4 just as they were literally announcing like oh you know this is your 5 minute one and then we're going to start kicking all of you out bye see you next year I literally went over to Greg Berger and met him so literally I had like five minutes to spare. So I did get to meet Greg Berger, as did a lot of other people, and I'm really unpleased that they also got to meet Greg Berger. Um, because honestly, what a guy, really, really nice guy. Got a really nice print signed by him. Um, got my 86 DVD signed by Greg Berger again. Really, really cool to get bits and pieces like that signed. So now on the 86 DVD, I've got like the Stan Bush autograph, uh, Greg Berger as well. So kind of building up some of the uh, different names and bits and pieces from the film, which is very cool. I shook hands with Megatron and Grimlock in the same day. I mean, like, I had, I had a moment, as a 25 year old grown man, I had a moment. And then we had the closing ceremony, which is always really sad. Um, but they always do this thing where they do like a nice edit of like, loads of, like a proper like montage of different Transformers clips from the different shows and films and areas, which was always really, really cool. And I do love to see that. Um, and then after that, it was kind of bringing everybody up on stage. Uh, saying thank you to Toy Fu, who made a lot of money for the charities, so good on those guys. Then they got the voice actors to come up on stage to kind of bow out and wave goodbye to everybody. Um, and that was pretty much it. That was pretty much the weekend. Um, they didn't really kind of say loads about 2025, which seemed a little bit weird until at the very end when they were like, oh yeah, 2025, um, 8th to the 10th of August, be there or be square. So I think we all know what I'm going to be doing next year in August. So yeah, that was about it really. It was all right. Quite liked my time there. Should we look at some figures? So, trying to keep everything in some sort of order, he says. The first thing that I ended up picking up on the Friday was indeed the 40th anniversary popcorn bucket there. 40 years of Transformers, a very, very nice piece. Some very nice artwork there. Um, this was quite useful trying to put all my figures in when I was bringing bits and pieces home, which was very, very nice. I then also, from the registration desk, picked up the duck because I had to have the duck. Um, I did unfortunately forget to get it signed, but I did get the duck, which was also a very nice addition um, to the collection because who wouldn't want a rubber duck? Registration desk as well. They also had some of these really nice little custom key rings. And this one was of Galvatron. Very, very nice little piece indeed. I also picked up not one. They were about five of them for pounds. So I thought, oh go on, then I'll get a few of those. Um, don't really do loads of pin badges, don't really wear loads of them to be completely honest, but I thought they do look quite nice and you know, maybe you might end up putting them on like the Nest Soldier um, vest. Next time I do the Nest Soldier, they could look kind of cool. And keep calm and TFN, that's what I say. Now I will show off the autographs now, purely because of the fact that I'm gonna need to like sit them in the background. Uh, first one I got, I did get this really nice print signed by David Kay. Um, obviously we have Beast Wars Megatron there, the Transmetals Megatron and the Transport 2 Megatron at the back there. Very, very nice meeting David Kay and getting a signed print there. Really, really cool to get that in um, all of its lovely glory. And credit to the artist. I don't remember your name, but credit to the artist for doing a really, really nice little print there. Thank you very much. I then met Greg Berger and obviously I had to get uh, I had to get this really nice Grimlock print signed and done and dusted there. Done about Commander Grimlock on that nice all kind of like G1 box style artwork there. Um, so yes, very, very nice print there. Two lovely gents, very nice to meet you both. But I did also get Greg Berger to sign the re-release of the Transformers The Movie. There we have Stan Bush, another little Stan Bush uh, reference here in this video. And obviously Greg Berger signed that, so very, very cool to have those two guys signing bits and pieces on the movie. Of course, also uh, going back to the registration desk, um, I did go ahead and get the TF Nation colouring in book. I thought I'd have to go ahead and get that. I don't really have a lot of intention of actually colouring it in because I'm a bit of a gimp and I just want to kind of keep it in all its nice uncoloured in glory there. I thought I would pick that up for a fiver. I did indeed get not one, but two programmes, just to the souvenir programme there. Um, 
I just thought I'll go and then, you know, I'll get another one just as a book spare. Uh, one of the other guys earlier in the group, the idea of maybe getting like a scrapbook of kind of bits and pieces from the years. So I thought that could be quite nice to do something like that at some point in time. Jumping ahead a little bit, but just while we're on the topic of magazines and bits, um, Ben Wasp Shop from the Refined Robot Co. did give me a very nice copy of this. Um, I haven't had a proper flick through of it yet, but we do, if it will show up on the frame there, have a very nice 40th anniversary tribute to the Transformers. So very, very cool piece there. Um, I am running out of room, but never mind. Bringing the camera a little bit further back yet, because I have still got some more bits. Um, moving on to the figures. Uh, going out a little bit out of order here, but something I picked up for 25 quid. Um, Decepticons Forever Ravage, brand new and sealed. The box is just a little bit beaten up there. As you can see, but I thought, oh God, and then for that kind of price, very, very nice little deal. Uh, he's just going to sit nicely kind of in the background there and prop up those prints for 23 quid from In Demand Toys. Um, is the Rise of the Beast Wheeljack. Very nice looking figure there. I'm looking forward to cracking that one open and pleased to say that I've got another one of the um, Rise of the Beast lineup from In Demand Toys. I picked up not just one nor for £12, but I did indeed get two. I thought, why not? I'll have two of them for the display. Also from In Demand Toys, uh, for £16, I picked up the Deluxe Wolf Cybertron Studio Series Cliff Jumper. Um, very nice little figure there. I did kind of want that guy. Um, I thought, oh, for 16 quid, I thought, yeah, I'd go and I'll give that mould a bit of a go. Beast Wars Reissue Iguanas uh, for a tenner there, and it was 30% off from, oh, I want to say he's TPE Toys, I believe. Also from TPE Toys, I picked up this, which is the Pink Bumblebee slash Laserbeak. Pink Bumblebee, we all know who it is, really. Uh, for a fiver, I thought I'll oh, go on then. Just sifted out some more artwork and prints. Uh, we have TF Nation print there, a little postcard of uh, RC and Spike. Uh, yeah, a little TF Nation one. They had a little like competition on the night where if you had one with like a different letter, I think it was a W or a T, you won a uh, figure, which was very, very cool. I didn't get the Legends Pass for Greg Berger, but on the Sunday at the um, closing of ceremony, they were to turn handing out some like spare bits and pieces. So I did pick up the Legend Class, uh, Legend Pass ticket there from Greg Berger. I said I didn't actually buy one, but they were just like handing them out. So there, I thought, oh, go on, then that's like a nice little keepsake. One of these little things from a uh, branch card, it's like one of these where you uh, it's a matrix ID card, so I think the idea was like you kind of scan it and then you can like play as like a little character online in the little card games. So that was quite cool. I'll have to check that out. Ben Wasp Shop was also handing out these Wheelie Spotlight, little comic book again from him and some of the guys we also does work with. So very cool. Looking forward to flick through that. The table is piling up a 40 something children in disguise sticker. Um, Tasha was like, why have you bought that? You're not 40. And I sort of went, well, yeah, no, but the franchise is. So yeah, 40 something, children in disguise. Very, very nice. When I am actually 40, I'll appreciate that a hell of a lot more. John Hughes, the Recreate 4 on the Friday night, hooked me up with this for a tenner, which is the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Bumblebee deluxe figure. Very, very neat figure. Had a little bit of a play around with this guy and it's pretty cool. Nice little figure. I do like that one. Nice, another addition to the Rise of the Beasts uh, Autobot lineup. And Jack also was gonna give me Wolf Cybertron Deluxe, uh, well, Fall of Cybertron Deluxe, sorry, Sideswipe. Um, but I said, no, mate, let me buy you a pint. So I gave him a pint and he gave me Fall of Cybertron Deluxe Class Sideswipe. Right, now we are running out of room. This is where it gets interesting. Beast Wars Basic Class Armadillo from This Brace Bridge for £10, very nice. Still yet to open up that guy, but looking forward to having a little fiddle around with that figure. From Toy Fu, I had to think for a moment there. I did pick up, it was boxed, but I did pick up the um, Earthrise Ironworks there for a tenner. I thought I'd always have to buy something from Toy Fu, and I kind of fancy giving that guy a little go. Oh, there goes Armadillo, straight into the bucket. Don't know how well they're going to show up on camera, but I did buy these little like die cast action figures. Well, little like die cast miniatures, I mean. We have Optimus Prime. Also picked up Bumblebee there, so I had to get Bumblebee to go next to Prime. Picked up a Megatron there as well. I had to get at least a Decepticon. And of course, yeah, at the end, I did also find myself a Starscream. So they were four for a tenner, so that was pretty cool. Uh, from Tasha's quiz on the Friday night, I did indeed not come first, but I did get a quiz. 
I did Tasha's tier 10 quiz and all I got was this lousy badge, but I also had a really good time. So thank you again, Tasha, for running a very, very cool quiz. And Tasha was also very nice to get me some little stickers. She got me, she got me Ultra Magnus there, keeping him in focus, very nice little print. And she also said, what Transformers characters do you love the most? I said Prime, Shockwave and Silverbolt. And she found Silverbolt, Beast Wars Silverbolt there. Again, very nice little sticker. Don't know where I'm going to put them, but very pleased to have them in the collection either way. So thanks, Tash. Thanks for the quiz and thanks for the little present. We love you a lot. Also, thank you very much to Mr. Thomas Lemon for some guitar strings. The most random thing ever, mate, but I'm going to give you a shout out because I love you and I need some guitar strings. And you went, there you go, Charlie. You can have those, so thank you very, very much, mate. And last but not least, a bit of a random one, but I did go ahead and from Toy Fu, I got this, which is a, um, it's a custom Cogman. I believe it's on the Studio Series version, which, I know it's basically just the mainline version, which we painted anyway. Um, and it's basically like a custom, it's got a bit of a wash on it. Not really gonna show up too well on the camera, I don't think. Um, but yeah, it's got a bit of a wash on it, some nice gold paint and all the rest. And I thought, go with them for a tenner. I'm gonna go ahead and give that guy a go. And, now that I am officially out of room, that is going to have to wrap it just about up. So there we have it. There is my TFN 2024 haul laid out there. Just a little bit of a this year. There wasn't really loads that I wanted. Um, most of it was kind of bits I did actually want to go ahead and get and that were kind of on a bit of a list. Um, and then there's just a few like kind of impulse purchases and a few figures which I kind of fancy trying. Um, and obviously I was going to walk away with the prints and like some other figures and bits and pieces. But as per usual, always a few nice little knick-knacky bits and pieces. Um, and yeah, that is generally speaking my haul for 2024. Apart from one thing which I ordered on the Sunday night, which was Legacy Gears. Now, this was something that I did actually kind of forget to buy. I did want to buy one on uh, the Sunday, so I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get the gears. But I got a bit delayed in the queue for Greg Berger, so literally as soon as the convention finished, we all kind of sat down, chilled out and vibed, and I thought, oh god, and then I'm going to order one off Amazon. So 20 quid. This was from a TF Nation money, so I'm counting in my TF Nation all for the year um because yeah it was technically kind of a tfn ish purchase i guess um but just today johnny messaged me and did say about the animated prime which is on in demand toys which i did forget to go ahead and get the convention well they kind of ran out so i didn't manage to get one so i have also ordered legacy voyager class optimus prime so that was kind of the last purchase of tf nation 2024 but overall a very successful haul so there we go, there's my thoughts on the con, uh, there's my haul. Um, overall, like, you know, all jokes aside for a minute, what a weekend though, like, I really, really did just have a stellar time. Awesome to catch up with people, awesome to buy bots, awesome to meet voice actors. Like, if you're ever thinking about doing something like this, you know, like a big convention, like, well, I say a big convention, there is bigger conventions, but, you know, it is a pretty decent sized convention now, like, it's getting busier, it's getting more people come in, it's getting bigger guests. So if you ever are kind of thinking about doing something like TF Nation, I would just say go for it. Give it a go. Give it a go for like the Saturday. Come along, see what you think. Um, and I think if you love Transformers and you put die half this kind of stuff, you're going to love it. Oh, but now I've got to go re get ready for work. This is literally like the Wednesday after. Like I got back on Monday and this is like the Wednesday now. And I'm still not quite recovered from it. But I think that'll just about do really. Um, yeah. Should we do it all again next year? I reckon we should. I hope you had a good time. Sorry if I saw you and I haven't mentioned you in this video. Um, literally, there have been like hundreds of people that I met this year. You were all awesome. You were all lovely. Um, thank you for letting me take photos. Thank you for getting photos with me. Um, and yeah, just thank you to everybody who made this weekend so cool. Thank you to the organisers. Thank you to people who came over and say hello. Uh, people who let me say hello. Um, because, you know, I'm still just a massive man child at heart. And yes, I'm going to let you lovely people get up now because you've got better things to do. And hear me and old man ramble on about Transformers for like how long this video is going to be. Thank you all very much for watching, and it's a TF Nation 2025. Like, oh, I wonder if I'm getting too old for this now.